You're listening to Mark of the Maker. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Steiner and you're listening to Mark of the Maker. And this is one of our mini episodes. I got a feeling it won't actually be that mini, but we'll see. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about recapping Blade 2022. And uh, I was not there, but a couple of our uh, crew were, were at Blade Show this year. One of them is Mr. Michael Birch. Here and tired. <laughs> Unsurprising. And uh, Mr. Tom Crine. Hey, guys. So Sean's sitting this one out. He wasn't at Blade. I wasn't at Blade. Um, he's the smart guy. He's probably actually getting something done, and we're going to record a little show and talk about the experience, which I'm interested to hear about because I wasn't able to be there this year. Mm-hmm. And you know who was there? Who? George Pelagonia of AMX. <laughs> Our sponsor. Uh huh. For all your titanium, you know your exotics, your some damascus steel, and what he also had on his table was some some awesome pieces of meteorite, like oh. one of the bigger chunks I've seen. Um, it was fantastic. But you can find his stuff at amxinc.com. Amxinc.com. Nice. And we thank you. We thank you, George. Absolutely. Um, but I, I didn't approach. I didn't ask for the price. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't look too much because I would have. I would have brought one home. You showed some self restraint. I did, and then it was so big. I would. I would spend so much money. It was probably thirty five, four thousand. I'm guessing on the weight and size. Wow. And I wouldn't be able to cut it up. I mean, that's what I did with the last big piece I had. Oh, it, it would break your heart to cut it up. You mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> I would be unwilling to cut it up. Not that I don't have the equipment to cut it up. Nope. Just don't want to. Right. Mm-hmm. I cut mine up. Tom cut his up. See? He doesn't Sadly, care. It's like all gone now. He's heartless. Looks like he's only got two pieces on there now. Ooh. Yeah. Meteorite. Where exactly do you think George got a giant slab of meteorite? Space. <laughs> Where else do you think it comes from, Mark? <laughs> Same as usual. Yeah. Very interesting. Who, who knows? I could totally picture George in an Indiana Jones outfit in some hidden away corner of the world bringing home a piece of meteorite. Or just broke into the Meteor Crater Visitor Center. <laughs> One or the other. Mm-hmm. Oh, I told you guys a story about the guy in town that had a meteorite. No. Uh, no. Yeah, so he's actually like a shirt tail uh, relative um, through marriage. But uh, I used to work with him in the hospital, and he's a super hardcore, like, gemologist, rock hound. He would uh, drive out west with his truck, like, a couple of times a year and load it up with different rock, come home and sell it. And uh, growing up, he always, at the end of his street, had this dark rock, bigger than a football, sitting there. And I was talking to him, and uh, it wasn't there. And and we started talking about it, and that was an iron meteorite that was sitting there. And he thought it was hilarious that nobody knew what it was, and it just sat there. And who knows how much it was worth that he had found somewhere and. The thing probably weighed 20 or 30 pounds. It was huge. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he finally took it in because it was starting, it was getting smaller. Basically it was rusting away, you know, but yeah. Wow. He thought that was a hoot. I'm not sure I'd tempt fate that way. Uh Uh-uh. That's some big balls. I sat there for probably, since I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he, he recently, um, had it cut up by the the University of Arkansas has a place that'll cut it up and uh like section it and for a a portion of the meteorite they'll do that and they'll document it and everything. It's pretty oh, cool. Wow. That is cool. We had a pretty massive meteorite land or come down somewhere near us and it was like this crazy hunt. All these people were trying to find it. 
Oh, yeah. A single chunk? Like, that came down or just lots of pieces? Because usually the single chunk leaves a, a decent hole. Yeah. Um, I think the if this was in the winter, and I think it was at least pretty low in the sky as a single chunk or looked like a single chunk. If it had come apart, it had just come apart. And I know little pieces were found like on the ice on one of the lakes nearby. So the thinking was that the whatever the whatever big piece was left must have like been gone right through the ice. I remember oh. didn't weren't there pictures of that too? It seems like maybe, yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. It was pretty exciting. I hmm. it uh we had a picture, we had video of it on our little doorbell camera. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, yeah. You showed video of it like that. Crazy. That crazy stuff. All right. So, Blade Show. Yeah. So, I I had TKI the, like a little bit a month and a little bit more before, so I had to kind of turn and burn for this show. But I didn't even have late nights like Tom had. How were some of those nights for you, Tom? Pretty late. You're talking about prepping for it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sucked. I. It's funny. I've been feeling my age a little bit the last year, uh, just in my hands and stuff, and I feel like I pushed as hard as I've ever pushed. But when I got to Blade, I was just, I, I felt really tired the whole time I was at Blade, more so than at any other time. I started recovering a little bit uh, by Saturday, but I think, Friday, I passed out at like 930 uh, before going to the pit. I just laid down on the bed and was out. So, yeah, it was interesting. I didn't, I don't know. Uh, I guess things things will have to change a little bit. But, yeah, it's just frustrating when you can't push like you're used to. I saw some, well, I saw the, I saw some pictures of you from the show, Tom, and you look tired. I was I, tired, man. I, I mean, saw those I, pictures. I'm like, damn, that boy looks t- super tired. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. I didn't work any harder than I normally do, but yeah, I was very tired at the first couple of days. I felt very worn down and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what caused it. I did. I, you know, you pull long hours, but that's, that's kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've tried to slow down on those quite a bit the last few years because I don't I don't like them. Um, they still happen sometimes, but I I don't like that feeling that anxiety as it builds up as it, it as your time goes starts going away slipping away and you yeah. start worrying about okay if I mess something up here I've got to lose this one or that one or I hate that feeling. Well, yeah, and I always go through that, and I. And I probably bit off more than, well, I know I did because I didn't finish, but, um, you know, there was a lot of stuff that I had wanted to bring and, and just like you said, time goes away. Um, Yeah. So that was, that's always frustrating. I I do like being under the eight ball a little bit because I work well under pressure and it, it, I really feel like I do get a lot more done per time period, but yes. Like you, I'm going to be changing that up. I'm going to, at least that's a goal. I say that every year, but I think, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm making some big changes in the shop too. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be focusing more on folders and some other stuff. Of course, I've got 10 million fixed blades already in progress in the shop. So we'll, we'll still be doing fixed blades, but our focus is getting ready to do a, a 360 switch here in the next month or so. Yeah. Grace Hornet said something about how she sends her stuff off to get photos done. Otherwise, she'd sit there and fiddle with them. And I think that that kind of hits, too. It's like if I got them done too early, I would sit there and take them apart and put them back together until, you know, I could ruin them. Right. right. Till you either found or caused a problem. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. If I look hard enough, I could always find something I can, you know, quote unquote fix. Yeah. So. And you went last year, right, Tom? I did. So what were you expecting for this one? I, I haven't been since 2019. Um, Jerry and I had gotten a booth, and we hadn't. It was out that one year. I missed last year, and so this is my first time back in a bit. I wasn't last sure what year. to expect. Last year was awesome. The only thing missing last year was our international customers. 
Um, but I felt like people were really excited and coming this year. I, I was kind of hesitant on what to expect. Um, and the reason I say that is blade show Texas was awesome. Like yeah. it was really good. Like it was jamming like way better than it I, the year before, like crazy. And mm-hmm. I would heard that a lot of people were like, man, that was so good. I don't feel like I need to go to Atlanta. Yeah. So there was that. And then the crazy high price of, of transportation, whether you're driving or flying, I think started, I, I was worried about that. Yes. And then also I'd heard people weren't going because they're going to Billy and Nick's mm-hmm. show. And so I was nervous. I think there were, I think that looking back on it, I think that was, that's what happened. I think, I think they put on a great show. I think the attendance was up, but I think my customers weren't there as much as normal. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I I mean, we saw a bunch of, of our customers that, you know, old school guys that have been around for a while. They're like, some of them were last minute. Some were like, "Eh, I'm just not making it this year. Um, and I get it, you know, some of these, you know, we've gone for, we've been going to the show for quite a while, you know, and also the high price and other shows spreading everything a little bit thin. I wasn't sure what to expect either. And yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of faces that I missed this year that I, I usually see every single year. Yeah. With, with that said, I think Alicia and, and their team did a good job of getting people there and getting people in, um, I also, I don't know. I, I I feel like once again, walking through the show, I kind of mm-hmm. feel like maybe I'm getting old because I don't I don't know a lot of these people anymore, <laughs> right. which that is weird, a, you know. That was a big thing for that we talked about was there was a ton of new uh, makers, um, and that's good. Of, it is good. It it's a, a ton of new, but a ton of new like micro brands. I guess. Yes. Um, it seemed like that was the bulk of the signage that I saw was a lot of micro brands I've never heard of. You know, I think probably doing the overseas production type of stuff. Um, but man, there's a lot of it, which is, you know, like I said, it's good. It, it, it you know, competition makes everything a little bit better, but yeah, like you, I felt like the old dude who's like, who are all these new people? These little <laughs> whippersnappers. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to believe that, um, I mean, not got to believe, you can see it, right? We've watched it happen over the last few years where um, it it reminds me a lot of the whole watch industry, right? Where, okay, there's these big Swiss brands and then, you know, budget or, or regular price brands, department store watches, right? And then the whole micro thing started to happen. Okay, micros are cool. And then very quickly, over a relatively short period of time, is this sudden uh, infinite sea of micro brand watches, right? Which for me, like, for me, it kind of turned me off because I'm like, "Eh, so many, right? Like, maybe if there's something that really, really strikes me, which there were one or two, but it's like, I don't know, it's just weird. And so I think the same thing has happened with knives, right? I mean, that's what happened with those micro brands. They OEM someone else to do the work. Um, The company that they work with makes their design for them and... They brand it and sell it. And I think it's basically the same kind of model for a lot of the stuff, right? Certainly yeah. stuff coming out of Asia. Yeah. And I didn't, truthfully, I didn't really look at any of them. Um, and the, obviously I have nothing wrong with it. I've, I've had Riot make some pieces for me and stuff. I just, for some reason, it didn't really, didn't draw me in or I don't know. I, I, I think because there's just so much of it, I kind of, you know, went towards the folks that I, I knew or had seen before and or custom makers, some of the new custom makers, stuff that intrigued me, but none of that really pulled me in too much. Not yeah. to say there wasn't awesome stuff there, it's just there was so much of it. Right. Yeah, agree. Yeah, but seeing some of the stuff on Instagram and other stuff from people that were at the show, there was some great looking micro stuff there, right? I just, it's not knives I'm that interested in, but they're good looking knives and knowing like how your Riot project came out and the other ones that I've seen, I'm sure they're nice, right? <laughs> yeah. They just don't do it for me, so it's not my thing. That's okay. Yeah. No, it was it was kind of like if you look at your Instagram feed, you know, and move it to Blade Show, it, it, that was kind of how it looked in a way. You know, a, a lot of some of the familiar guys and a lot of new stuff. 
So it was definitely interesting. And, and one thing I, I did want to talk about is like Thursday night in the pit. You were there, Tom, right? Yeah, I was there till uh, about midnight, I think, on Thursday. That was weird, wasn't it? It was very, very empty. Yeah. And, and a lot of the people that were there, I didn't know. No, but it's like <laughs> Thursday night was like, it's you it, in the past. Traditionally, it seems like it's been a pretty big, you know, yeah, heavy, oh, you yeah. know, a lot of guys would kind of be like, Hey, check out my stuff. A lot of show and tell a lot. Right. I'm sure there's some selling going on too, you know, but generally it's pretty heavy with uh, a lot of people coming in Thursday night, you know, probably boozing a little too much and, and getting it going. But it was very, very quiet thursday night which was i was yeah. kind of like oh shit yeah that is I weird agree. yeah yeah but yeah it, it was i don't know it was like if it was signed to come for the show or not maybe maybe like tom said part of it maybe right because some of the stuff was stupid expensive travel's expensive that hotel has gotten ridiculously expensive i mean it's always been expensive but mm-hmm. it's hard right it's it, a lot it of was, money. It, the hotel wasn't that bad if you were in on the blade show thing yeah yeah it was like 200 people. bucks a night i think okay yeah and which today's nashville was quite a bit more and so was uh fort worth I, yeah i heard from but, a bunch of people that they were sick of the hotel right because all the weirdness where you couldn't get a room then you could and then even if you yeah. had a room some people showed up and couldn't get their room or you know what i mean they're they got canceled without telling them or whatever. I know a bunch of people are, we're off doing Airbnb and a bunch of other stuff, right? Just like, fuck. That's true. Why deal with the hotel, right? I mean, it's ultra convenient. No question. Well, half half of our crew stayed in an Airbnb. Yeah. It was like three miles away and they just Ubered every morning to the show. There you go. Well, that, that may make sense for why it was kind of, you know, pretty light on Thursday. Maybe so. Yeah. Makes sense. Usually, like you said, there's, there's that, there's some electricity in the room, right? There's a buzz going on because it's like night before the show. Yeah. Everybody's super happy to see each other, right? A little uh, reunion fun kind of thing. And like, woo right. let's go. Show's tomorrow. Yeah, it just wasn't there. You know, and they also had, you know, it, it set up like you, like they had the last few years or whatever it was where they got, you know, the beer tents and, you know, more of the staff wearing Blade, Blade Show stuff where they kind of embraced it, which, right, you know, right. I think is kind of fun. Yeah, I really liked that last time I was there. Yeah. But uh okay, so this year too, they you know, they always have a line. Um but this time it was out yeah, it was outside, which I thought was interesting. I don't know. They didn't let people line up inside. Yeah. And it was Seems a big like line. there was also multiple lines, maybe. I don't I don't know. That all gets really confusing. Cause I I taught and when I came in there was people waiting in different places. Okay, so, so I, what what time did you teach? So my class was started at um, eight and finished at nine thirty, and I was coming in at like nine forty nine forty five on Friday. On Friday, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so people come in at ten, and then people come in at twelve, maybe. I I don't know. It was yeah. weird. Yeah, I know that's. It, it, I know they're trying to solve issues, but yeah. Yeah, it seems like they're always kind of changing it around, but I think sometimes it might add a little confusion. I don't know. But I knew they were outside. I was waiting at 8 to kind of see when Culpepper would open up. Um, I really was I was going after the Mother Pearl. It's been pretty slim. And that's one of the things that's like buying supplies to the show is pretty pretty important. You know, when it comes to natural materials, I was wanting a little bit of more mammoth that I don't use. Around. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mother Pearl. Um, some Damascus and pieces that I know go up pretty quick, but, uh, I mean, that's the place to kind of get it cause you got to look at it, but also sometimes you get discounts, you know, they, you get a show discount, so you got to stack up what you can. Who gives a show discount? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Are you for real? Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a show discount? Oh. Tom, did you miss the show discount? Yeah. The uh, oh, Vegas Forge, they, I pick up some of their Seismic. It's a one that I've, I've oh, yeah. gotten to like, and they give a show discount. I've actually never used any of their stuff. You don't pay shipping, you don't whatever. Uh, my boy actually picked that out at uh, the California show. He's like, this is a real pretty 
Damascus. I was like, all right, cool. Um, and it turned out to be really pretty Damascus. Yeah. I, d- I do think it's important to buy materials at shows. I- I've always said that, especially natural materials. Um, it's cool to see different new synthetic stuff, but natural materials for me, I have to, I really need to look at them and handle them and understand how they're going to be used. Um, ironwood for say, for example, um, I'm very particular about my ironwood. Um, I had people say they had great ironwood. I went, I didn't find any, I, I didn't find any at the last show at this show. I scoured the entire show and I found four sets of scales that I thought were acceptable. Wow. Um, yeah, most of it's too dark. Most of it doesn't have enough contrast and most of it isn't burl. So I want a light burl with heavy contrast. Yeah. It's very yeah. difficult to find. If you, if you start dark with ironwood in about a year or two, it'll be black. So you just wasted your yeah. time. You should just start with African black wood and be done with it. I did find some really good koa. Um, drop a name here. High koa. They had some good rocking blocks. Was good. Um, okay. Quite a really some really really good koa. Um, I picked up quite a bit of woolly mammoth um, from Charles at Turnbridge. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and I got some really nice stag from uh, Christy at Culpepper. So yeah, really lucky uh, to find that stuff. Oh, I did. I did find some uh, steel when I was walking around with Michael. We found uh, Damo Works. Um, okay. Basically, they're the guys there were selling it for a Smith from Germany, and uh, I'd heard of the guy before. He does um, like he's done collaborations like Chad has with Boker. Um, and he made, or I don't know if you remember it, they made a knife with some, uh, Damascus that had like a Nimitz class World War II deck plates made into the Damascus or something like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, uh, this time he had some, uh, Leopold tanks barrels in the mix. So it was kind of cool. Oh yeah. Pick up some of that. Didn't you look at, was that while you were there, you were sending me info about that, Michael? Yeah, the so tank was strange. Damascus. Yeah, and they had and Boker had actually done some of those too. The Panzer tank. That's right. Damascus yeah. pieces. So, but they had stainless Damascus for yeah. very very low prices, where it almost were like up. scratching your head. And it was M three ninety and Nitro B. Oh, that's right. Um, mix, and it was. 12 inch piece, three sixteenths by two, uh, uh, roughly, and it was 145 bucks or something. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm getting ready to cut some of that up. Yeah, I I'm gonna cut. I was actually getting ready to band salt tomorrow. I mean, it could be 10 cans and whatever. I don't know, but for that price, you got to try. Yeah, yeah. I remember you sending me the info, and I'm like, Nitro B. What the hell is Nitro B? So I had to go look it up. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. But I want to backtrack just a hair. Um, so that Friday morning, you know, there's always the doors open. And, you know, we you know, we had moved. Our booth is like towards the wall and to the left quite a bit as you're coming in. So maybe I didn't see as much, but it didn't seem like there was a little bit of rush. And I don't know. I don't know what the big first come first serve was this year because um, Burnley wasn't set up. And I know that's usually a big, big draw. But there's a little bit of a rush. I think one of them is. Dark timber. I, I don't think I know what that is. Uh, he's a he's a, a bladesmith. Br- okay. Pretty clean work. Br- I, I I enjoy his work. Um, yeah, well, it must be a lot of people will enjoy it if they're that's the the good first come first serve. But it was, but it didn't have that huge rush that you usually. I didn't. Either. I didn't feel it. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't there, and I don't. I don't know. It just there. Usually, it fills up super fast, and you're like, "Okay, the it, the show is on." Right. We are rolling, but it seemed like it took a long time for people to get into the the show. I think part of it is they're letting them in at different times and sending them through different parts of the show, and I I kind of don't like that. But nobody asked yeah. me, so I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there might be reasons. You know, health. You know, well, I'm sure there code are. violations or what there could be all sorts of stuff we aren't privy to, but I kind of miss that, you know, kind of 
I don't know, maybe a Black Friday type of yeah. The sh- the show's going. Let's get this party started. Yeah, you know, usually it ramps up really fast. Yeah, I don't want any. I don't really want anybody to get ran over. But no, I don't either. I just want the excitement. You know. Yeah. Yeah. When I watched when I watched the Blade Show videos of them opening the doors. That was my t- take from afar, right? It was like, wow, those people are surprisingly orderly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there were people, you know, fast walking coming through the door, but it, I didn't see anybody running. I'm like, wow, that's weird. I know if I'm Sean surprised. was here, he'd want people to get run over. But <laughs> <laughs> How many tramplings were there exactly? Right. I mean, that's like that would let you know how how much excitement there was. <laughs> But it was booked. I mean, it was like the room was full of booths yeah. and tables. And yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. there was no empty space anywhere. And as far as I could tell, I didn't see a bunch of like weird. I'm sure there still was in some places like kitchen pans or, you know, it seemed. Yeah. Yeah. Full knives. Type I of did stuff. not see the old lady cooking this year. What the hell? Yeah, it, it was it was packed as far as like that goes, too. I did see some dude selling drill bits, uh, drilling through like concrete blocks and shit, but. Yeah. I didn't see that. I missed that. That That's was over by the Spider Co. booth. Yeah. A lot of, a uh, lot more grinders. You know, we had, I mean, oh, if yeah. you're a maker, man, it is the time to be the ma- a maker with as much stuff as, as there is now. Tons did of you cool see the grinders, big... tons of supplies. Did you see There's the big so... exciting thing? What's that? Did you see the big exciting thing? What was the big exciting thing? Well, Chris Wilmot and I have been working on a little bit of a collaboration, and uh, he's going to be building a buffer, dedicated buffer for knife makers. Whoa. So we walked around all Saturday afternoon, and you were like, hey, check out this cool buffer (laughs) we're working on. I just assumed you'd already seen it. Wow. I hadn't. I had not. Dude, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be good. It's like, it's gonna be like the one I've got here in the shop, basically. Um, sorry, train. It's gonna be variable speed, and uh, the cool thing is a quick, uh, quick removal arbors. So basically, yeah. you mount your wheel, and you've yeah. got them mounted on right or left-handed arbors, and literally yeah. you can spin them off and spin another one on. Uh, yeah. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Uh, he's got an yeah, email got one list. Of those. Yeah, yeah, you do. That, that I got from you. Yep. Yeah. So those are that's going to be made. Uh, you're, it's going to be available this year. Chris said. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Rick Hinder saw it. He loved it. Ken Onion was there. I think both those guys put in orders. Um, it's it's going to be exciting. Very cool. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm a I'm a KMG man through and through. Just because I, you know, they were with me from the get go and got one of their, you know, newer ones too. But I, I liked seeing what Mara braid is doing. And, uh, there's a broad Broderick. I, I hopefully I'm saying that right. Also doing some very cool stuff. I checked out. Um, it's just, it's, there's a ton of cool stuff. You can buy, you know, platins that are like rounded now. And you're talking about so many broad cool. Beck ironworks. I think that's it. The blue one. Yeah, I looked at that. Yes. That's pretty cool. I'm I'm probably yeah. getting one of those for the shop. They look very nice. Their stand looks very awesome because you can put all your attachment things in the stand. Well, and they've got, they have a lot, like a plethora of attachments. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think if you're getting into it, it's the, one of those is something to really, because it's going to have everything you're going to need. Yeah. You know, it's old guys with grinder sitting not even set up because we collected shit for too long yeah I've, yeah, it's I've funny i've never i i don't have a kmg I, the only i did have like their first one and mm-hmm. i gave it away i never actually turned it on um i gave it to my uh cousin's kid but i yeah. i've grant i've worked on them and i've i was never a fan of the the pulley system no, my new one doesn't have the. Pull. The new one is badass. I've not it worked is. on one, and I would really like to. It's uh, it looks awesome. That's yeah, nice. And the uh, then I want to check out that Amera braid. They've got their, you know, everyone's got the surface grinder attachment. Right. Um, but they they're one of the few that has like a where you can 
unlock it basically um it's got on off magnetic oh yeah so you can actually just kind of turn those off kind of like you can have surface grinder i'll be honest i went to the burking booth and i looked at the big 20 inch wheel again that thing is awesome. always <laughs> yeah you what know. yeah we all we all we all want that uh, one <laughs> someday <laughs> swoons he swoons it's pretty pretty mm-hmm. amazing. it's okay so we saw some cool stuff you know let's talk about you know sales and how do you think it well, went overall as far as like the show let me throw one more thing out real quick as far as equipment okay did you see the coal ironworks uh press oh yeah yeah you sent pictures Just what of you sent me dude game changer seriously if yeah, i forged game. i would have one of these in my shop tomorrow yeah if, it's, if it's i could a, get it a, there basically they they put a, a idea. yeah they put a digital readout and you can zero it and like it'll just stop at like 0. 0.70 or whatever you know you can put in whatever so i mean you can forge perfect squares you can literally forge a circle you know a round out of a square and i still want one of those induction heaters i don't care people say i couldn't cook hot dogs on it i don't care i'm gonna try and then i'll, I'll have it yeah <laughs> They're handy. Like they're I was saying, I was talking expensive. to someone who used... No, they're not. There was someone who was using it just to put their, you know, take their wood. You know, sometimes they'll they'll uh, press, hot oh, yeah. press their mm-hmm. material on. They use it to get rid of the glue, heat up the thing to pull the handle off. And I was like, that's pretty smart. Oh, yeah. 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 Because it won't mess with the wood, right? Yeah. It, it only metal. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Pretty yeah. cool. Anyways, I, that was the other thing that I really wanted to throw out there because they're innovating on blacksmith tools, which is kind of cool. Yeah, we're seeing a ton of cool, really nice stuff coming around for the blacksmithing and uh, blade smithing sort of stuff. Just I think this huge influx of people doing it. Well, that's that's another thing I looked at was uh, the kilns, like Paragon and Even Heat. Man, they're uh-huh. nice now. Holy shit. Yeah, they are. Like the makes what I looks like makes what I have look like really old. Yeah. I need a new one. Something fierce. I don't, but I want to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes with tools, man. I mm-hmm. know. I'm a sucker for tools. Oh yeah. All right, let's keep going. All right. Yeah, sorry. Where were you going, Michael? Sales? Yeah, sales and whatnot. Did you hear anybody talking? How do you think it went? What? Uh, how, how did you feel it went for you? Well, I, I'm just going to say my sales were down. Okay. Yeah. Um, I felt like a lot of my normal customers weren't there. Um, and my the traffic through where I was, like, especially Sunday. Like Sunday, because I don't do Saturday. So Saturday, I can't really speak on. But Friday, I felt like sales were down. Saturday, some of the people I talked to said sales were up on Saturday. But like Sunday, I, I really try to stay at my booth. But when I'm standing there by myself for 20 or 30 minutes, it's hard to stay there. Wow. You know? Yeah. And, Goes and down on Sunday. I was literally at the corner of my booth in the aisle, like leaned up against it on my elbow for... I'd be there for 15, 20 minutes and then I'd get bored and walk off and talk to the RMJ guys, which I could see my booth. But literally Sunday for me, it was pretty dead. Huh? I would have bet. So, um, you didn't stay for Sunday. Did you, Michael? I haven't stayed for Sunday in a long time. Right. We, we had 11 hour drive. So we got up at six in the morning and scooted. Yeah. I think my lottery stuff, you know, always kind of keep an eye on how those go. Less, it was less numbers, less, you know. Yeah, mine was significantly less. I didn't think I was going to have a cards enough cards based on how many I brought, and I didn't use but half or less. Yeah. So. Yeah. You like you guys said, you got to wonder how much that has to do with the with the crowd, right? If it's a changing bunch of faces, then maybe that makes sense, right? There's a bunch of newer makers who are drawing people and. Maybe they're not your buyers, right? I mean, that's oh, yeah. just the reality of it. And yeah, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's different. I changed location from where I used to be 
I right, raised my right. prices some for this show. Um, I, I finally had to get around to, you know, adding prices for the stuff that I keep adding to the knives. <laughs> so there's a lot of factors. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was still fine. It was great. Yeah. Great show. But I, I feel like a lot of our customers are the custom maker customers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think a lot of them are going to Portland. Yes. Period. Yeah. I think you're they very did not come to one. blade show. Yeah. Portland or even some of the small shows, right. That we've talked about. Oh yeah. 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 And that's another thing to start thinking about, you know, with this many shows, you have to pick and choose what shows you're going to get do. Sure. And makers also are picking and choosing. And so, you know, uh, it makes it hard for the customer and it makes it hard for the maker too. So maybe shows won't be quite what they were in the past. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to pick and choose next year. I'm going to have to rotate or something. I don't, I, uh, I think I'm down for like six or some shows this year. Yeah. It's yeah. Too um, that's and a I'm lot getting, for you. It's so much for me. I'm only doing um, four. So geez. I, yeah. I don't know what happened. I really don't just kind of started piling up and adding up. I was like, well, shit. Um, <laughs> and doing them a month apart is very unbirch like Uh, yes. I, I, I did come in and like Monday, you know, we drove all day, whatever. I slept for 11 hours and I was up in my shop cranking everything back on. Yeah. And I usually take a few days at least to, right. That may be why I uh, crashed at one thirty day in bed. Taking that. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised to see you, texting me stuff and posting stuff from the shop as early as you did right after getting back. I'm like, Whoa, usually he's in decompress mode for a few days. Yeah. And I had to do that for blade, you know, yeah, I right. come straight from TKI and was in there the next day. It just, uh, yeah, it's not me, but, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. So, but it also makes me uh, make a lot more knives. There you go. Let's talk about Saturday. Yeah, don't know. That's I'm, I'm getting ready to talk about Saturday because Saturday was my favorite day, and I think uh, I'm gonna. That's the only way I'm gonna do Blade again. Um, I kind of <laughs> put it out there, you know. Open bids are closed in the morning. Uh, I probably won't be at my table. Michael converted. Yeah, uh, and all I did was walk around and look at. I, there was no booth. It I was did not look at. It was awesome, right? Oh, so I mean, it was it was Randall. Riffic. Randall Riffic. That's a real word. Yeah. That's um, a good episode, So many Randalls. Man. So many, so many great old knives. And I usually just get like a cursory look where I wander around. I'm like, ooh, that's cool. That's cool. But I, I eyeballed them all hard. Everything that had a case, I was looking at it. It was pretty you fun. Know. Me and Michael walked around for a couple hours, which was very rare to do at a show and so much fun. Yeah. It was, it was an absolute blast. And I tried to take a lot of, fo- I took, this was sad. I, you know, I kept saying, oh, I need to take more pictures of friends and things like that. I probably had 70 pictures of knives on my phone <laughs> and maybe like two. And one was me flipping off my wife. You know, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I tried to include, you know, because I want to take pictures to post on Mark of the Maker. And I tried to post, I think I got them all up. A lot of the, the heavy the big ones I wanted to get pictures of, like that yeah. very first Bo Randall piece. You know, we saw a ton of uh, Mark IIs. I almost went home with one of those that was really good price. Crazy good patina. Um, man. Really clean. Oh, it was great. Yeah. And cheap. You know, I found, you know, knives we've talked about. Um, the... Uh, the hog knives, the Franklin piece that was super right. crazy. I posted in our group. He was going to sell it for 450 or something like that. Right. Right. That's, I mean, that's stupid cheap for such cool. Yeah. Pieces of history, you know, as far as like our knife history goes and how the tactical knives or the EDC knives got to where we are, you yeah. know, and that's, you know, I've said this over and over. That's the shit I want. It's like, odd pieces of history, you know, that kind of leads us to where we are now. Right. Yeah. That Mike Franklin folder was like straight up snapshot in time kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then somebody found that, uh, that piece that had, you know, had to get for you, you know, (laughs) Corey from our Facebook group. High five, Corey. Thank you. 
led led us to the way and found that. And uh, Mark was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll take that." So I got to play with that for a bit, and that was badass. Yeah, had to stand that off, send that off today, and that sucked. <laughs> so for people who aren't in the Facebook group, Corey Pettit, I think I got your name right, Corey. Um, Corey posted a picture of a David Sharp Big Bear with carbon handles. I think red liners. Does that sound right, Michael? Oh yeah, it's got red liners. Yeah. But it had a tumbled blade, which is really interesting. And so, um, yeah, Michael was kind enough to go check it out and grab it for me. And thanks to Ryan for not sneaking in there and stealing it in the meantime. But mm-hmm. yeah, but when he posted that, I was going to be like, "You just, you just calm down now. Let's, let's, <laughs> just, let's not start sneaking around into my uh, my cases." Right. Right. Yeah. So the guy. So the guy that I that had all the fantastic Randall and that, that hundred thousand dollar first bow Randall knife that I got a picture of. That's so cool. Holding. Oh God. It's so cool. It was just like in the middle of just this bunch of other historical Randalls. Wow. And that's the same guy that I got my, uh, Don Fogg piece from my oh, really? mall. Yep. We had all the good um, stuff. Well, I didn't see it. I, I actually went back and asked him. I was like, do you have any lumps? Do you have any Don Foggs? He was like, actually I've got this, Kamal, which I've talked about before, being a collab between yeah. Don Fogg and... Yeah, he's like, I don't have a Fogg, but I've got a Kamal. Yeah. <laughs> and just a funky, funky piece. I, I posted it up in the group, but uh, Usyk handle, um, button lock, you know, of course, Damascus, and a very, very yet again style um, handle shape. Yes. Um, but probably the coolest part was it, the, the fact, and made in 1981. The fact that the collector had a little card made for his collection. Yeah. With Cataloging the, uh, his stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, that card was cool. Yeah, it's got the dimensions. It's got what he paid for it. The day he bought it was 84, but it was made in 81. And he paid, the original price was 1250 And what the estimated value at the time in 1984 was $1,500. Yeah. Which is a shitload of money for then. Right. <laughs> So it was a very cool little piece that come with it, a little little piece of history. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, you get to bargain a little bit with those guys. It's kind of fun. Yeah. What, what can you do for it? Pretty awesome piece. I don't know. I, I enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun walking around, walking around with Michael because yeah. it's like most guys, most people that are into it don't appreciate some of this stuff the same way. So it was like, yeah. you know, we could guy, kind of geek out together over stuff. Yep, yep. And it was really cool. We were nerding hard The uh, <laughs> when we were talking to the guy that had all the Jose de Bragas. Oh, that's the guy I bought he, my that uh, guy was a, knife from. Mm-hmm. He had so much information about those guys. Yeah. I thought he was going to have a stroke, honestly. Why? Because yeah. he got excited talking about but, it? Uh, no. <laughs> there was a little girl throwing a paper airplane with a paper clip on it into his display cases oh! over and over. Yeah. But that was rough. Okay. He was acting like it was like my neighbors, like they didn't exist, you know, uh-huh. like I treat. Mm-hmm. Like I do. Yeah. I wanted to have a stroke for him. Yeah, I did too. But he was that's super about cool. What, uh, yeah. What'd what you get, you Tom? He would be a fun one to kind of have on the show because he, he knew a lot of these guys. Like the whole conversation started because he had like a, a Rod Hudson uh, knife. Yeah. The belt knife. Yeah. And, and the, he had a Bowie in, or a dagger in there too. But mm-hmm. I spotted in there a little bitty Damascus knife and it's super cool. Um, it was by uh, Wayne Vakovic. Vakovic? I don't know how you pronounce that name. Okay. I think just looking at it, it was probably a remnant knife, you know, where he cut out another knife and this was left. Yep. And uh, that's kind of cool. And it's still got the original leather sheath and a little Damascus bead he made for it. Um, And, and, you know, the history there is really cool. You know, he's like, what, the fifth master smith ever. So. Oh, wow. And it was just sitting there unnoticed and. When we talked about it, you know, he's told us where he was now and what he's doing, and it was, it was really pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, these were personal pieces for the fellow, and I I realized later that I got picture of the sheet the the belt knife in the sheet. Yeah. Uh, the but not the actual blade part of it. 
Ah. Oh, Real yeah, smart. that was awesome. Yeah, that's, you know, we had that experience at a couple of the tables at the New York show, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. you get to talking with some of the people that have these cases, and it's like, okay, there's these cool time machine pieces stashed away in the cases, sometimes like totally unsuspecting, right? Like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Whoa, what the hell is that? Um, yes. And then you actually start some conversation, and sometimes people know exactly what they have. In fact, most of the time, I guess. But but yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, he was my neighbor, and we whatever, and you know, I would go have lunch with him every Saturday. And it's like, whoa, yeah. super cool history that you just kind of like happen across, right? Yeah. yeah. It's to a point where like, are these for sale? Because you don't know if they're just showing them off. Yeah, right, have exactly. Such a connection to them. Yeah, speaking of New York, I, I got to talk to Graz, Grazinia Shaw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She wanted the the cronk back. I said no. <laughs> she did have a really, really cool, clean Panama fighter. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. But I think she's got a deep pile of that stuff and just like shaves a little off the top and brings it out. She mm-hmm. has some amazing pieces in her collection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So everybody got something. Even Mark, who didn't go. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. I oh, did. I got. Oh, what else you get? Go ahead. I, I didn't get it, but I got to check out that Cuisenberry um, uh, fighter. Oh, yeah. Buoy that uh, won Best Damascus. Yes. Um, the collector that got it was kind enough to show it to me. Chris. Um, Chris. And he showed me some also really badass pieces from his collection that uh, I'm very grateful to get to handle. Um, but yeah, that thing was amazing. The Damascus was just, it was perfection. Yeah. There's a twist. Um, a uh, Not Turkish twist, something else? Turkish twist, thank yeah. you. Um, but it was like a very kind of elongated one. Yeah. And every single line lined up, which if you look into how that stuff's made, it is it, it doesn't happen that way unless you have every single twist perfect. Yeah. Every single piece square, perfectly square, perfect size, everything. And then that stag that he got from another maker, someone's collection. Oh, I remember him just, saying the stag was a gift from a friend of his or somebody he knew. Yeah, it was just like it's all the popcorn. <laughs> and of course it's a takedown, you know. <laughs> No big deal. Right. No big deal. It also comes apart. Yeah. And he's just, he's a nice guy too. It's just like, it's. Yeah. That always makes it such a great, a better piece. We got to get Mike to come on with us. Absolutely. That'd be super Um, fun. Yeah. It was cool to see. Yeah. Did did you happen to go by Vince Evans' table? I didn't. Oh. Wow. I think he got best sword in the show and maybe. Oh, wow. I think he won two awards. Okay. Uh, and he had like four knives on the table, so. Right. <laughs> he did uh, the five finger dagger, the cinquenita or whatever. I, I did see it. He wasn't there. I got a picture of that. I can post that up because I was that, like, oh, that was that stopped, crazy. It stopped me in my tracks. Yeah. And then the the sword. I don't know if you looked at the sword. On one side it had two fullers. On the other side it had three, and they nested. So the two fullers oh. pushed into where the three fullers had gaps wow and like one side had some kind of seven piece damascus and the other side had like five or so it was different side to side and it was amazing to hold he let me i was i didn't see that i just i I stopped by and i was like whoa i mean it was fantastic yeah yeah his stuff was pretty amazing yeah yeah he let me hold one of the little the little knives on the table and i was just like (laughs) <laughs> it would the detail was pretty amazing i didn't hold the sword or the cinquenita but oh man yeah amazing all right materials i think you guys talked a little bit right yeah. what yeah. what all did you grab you got some vegas forge michael you said yeah i just i went and picked up some random damascus here and there um like i said i was there at eight in the morning waiting to, and i just went the night before to see if anyone was open I mean, I didn't, I haven't been like I said in three years or so. So I was, so a lot of mother pearl, but it was like they said, it was pretty slim pickings. Yeah, they, they've had a rough year with it. Um, black lip. Um, I did pick up one set of smoked. Have you ever tried that Tom? No. Um, they'll take your white 
you know, your regular mother pearl and they'll smoke it to look like black lip. Huh. Um, and it looks very cool, you know, but I don't know how I'm going to like label it. Cause I don't want anyone to think that it's like real black lip, you know? Yeah. So that'd be a kind of a weird one to be like, well, this is smoked. It's not whatever, but it, I don't know a little bit of mammoth. Um, of course, some more rich light, just kind of the thing. Oh, carbon fiber loaded up on some of that. You got to, and yeah. that was about it. I stacked up on the natural oh, materials. Stag. I thought, yeah, I thought they had a great selection of stag this year. It was great, right? He had just cut up a bunch. Yeah, and it wasn't getting picked through like it was in the past. Like usually, I have to stand with like twenty other guys uh, trying to pick through it, and it was like me and maybe like two other people. It was kind of wild. I think people have almost stopped looking for it. Oh, but yeah, I went. I didn't get by there until Sunday and I got still got like 10 or 10 or 12 really nice sets. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. There, there shouldn't be anything left by then. No. Right. In right. good at least. Yeah. All right. So good show. Got to see some cool stuff. Did you get any tools? Mm-hmm. Michael? Uh, no, I saw you had a little hammer in your picture though. Oh, what was yeah. that all about? Yeah. So I tried that out yesterday and it was pretty badass. So basically it's got, um, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Daly, uh, Kyle uh, Daly. He, yeah. Kyle could not think of his na- first name to save my life. <laughs> Kyle's a nice guy. And he's, he's pretty smart. He, he's innovating some stuff, but he had some ball peen hammers there with that. He'd like milled a pocket in and brazed a tungsten carbide ball in. Oh, oh. and so it's for straightening. And I tried it yesterday, and hot damn, but it works. Interesting. I had I had some AEBL kitchen knives that looked like potato chips. Like yeah, when I was learning how to keep them straight, I had a I have got like four or five that I just threw in the drawer. I was like, I can't use these ever, and they're like sixty thousandths of an inch thick. And I had one that when you pushed it down at the butt, it was probably three eighths plus off the other end. Oh geez, damn. it's flat. Wow. I use that. I put it on a, a, a metal, like a plate that I have that's uh, about an inch thick and a couple inches wide and 12, 14 inches long. And I just use it as, a, as an anvil and I just basically, wherever it was touching, so you want it, the curved parts up, wherever it touched, I hammered and it stretches it there, right? And mm-hmm. it took me about five minutes and it was straight. I flipped it over at the tip. It had a couple spots. I hammered that out and now it's, Dude, it's it's almost perfectly straight. Wow, straight enough Holy to shit. use. Yeah, I was like blown away because I'd heard about it. You know, that's that's something I'd heard about for a long time that you could do. Um, Patrick Doyle has even been telling me about it recently. Yeah, but I'd never done it. And when I saw that hammer, I was like, oh, I got to try this. And yeah, it worked great. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I was just kind of blown away. Uh, the reason Kyle said he started doing it was because. He was having some warpage issues with his kitchen knives because I can only imagine trying to heat treat big kitchen knives that are already thin. Right. And, uh, yeah, he said it it works great, and I 100% can see that. I'm going to have to get me one of those because that's part of the reason I don't hit the kitchen knives as much as I'd like to because they piss me off with their warpage. (laughs) Dude, this was, like I said, pretty pretty surprised and pretty uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Blown away. Awesome. I'll tell you what, though, on a, another note about Blade Show, just a quick one. I I always kind of lose my voice, but I almost lost it just on Friday alone. I did. I don't, th- I don't think I've talked that much um, at a show before. Same. Um, it was, like I said, different customers, but man, I did not stop talking at all. It was just constant, which is great, you know, into the night. Um, and a ton of people that were very nice about the podcast, which I have to say thanks to all you guys that said something kind about, you know, what we're doing here. here. Yeah. A lot of people showing love lots. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I just, I, I, I greatly appreciate that. It really, really makes it, uh, you know, it's nice. It's just nice. Yeah. I even had people stop me in the aisle. Yeah. Which is weird. Um, Cause I don't, I wouldn't know them, and they'd be like, "Hey, Mister Crying," I'd be like, "Okay, yes." <laughs> and and it was really cool. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. 
I had people think I was Birch several times too, but yeah, course. that happens. <laughs> it's a good thing there's not more of us sexy guys out there. There you go. Wow. There you go. Yeah, it's nice to get that kind of feedback, right? I I remember you saying that, Michael, that you had t- lots of nice comments from folks. It's you know this thing's a lot of work, right? And so yeah, <laughs> it, it's nice to hear back from people that you know they enjoy it and. Yeah, we're not just wasting our time. It's cool, right? I mean, we get good indication of that from all the conversations we have in the Facebook group, but still, it's nice. We, yeah, yeah, we I, appreciate you guys. I don't know if, and maybe some people do, but just how much that really means to means to me to to hear that, not just about podcasts, but about knives. You don't have to buy something of mine yeah. to to rejuvenate me or to just saying hi and saying, Hey man, I've, I've been enjoying your work or whatever. That means so much, you know, when you're tired or you're worn out and you come back from that show, you're kind of rejuvenated. You're a little bit like, Oh yeah, that's, that's why I'm doing it. You know, you know somebody is paying attention. It, it means, it means a lot. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, because we spend a lot of time on the show between picks episodes and research and history, we spend more time than I'm probably a, a lot of people do kind of looking back, right. And talking and thinking about, uh, you know, we're really fortunate, right. <laughs> One of the, I think we've said this a couple times with guests, right. We're very fortunate to have this opportunity to talk knife dork stuff incredibly frequently compared to what most people have, right. Most people don't have a, a crew of friends that they get to talk to that often about nerding out on the same kind of, you know, like-minded friends nerding out on knife stuff. And it's, so it's really cool to, to have that. And then it's like, like you said, when you're there and there's the sea of cases to go dig through, it's like, Ooh, candy store. This is really cool. Yeah. I think that's what you miss the most about blade. It is for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I miss seeing my friends, obviously that was kind of the number one thing that I, my, uh, FOMO that kicked in over the weekend was like, Oh man, I do wish miss seeing my friends. But yeah, when you are like, all right, we're, we're heading out to go look at these old, cases full of knives i'm like oh damn that i really miss that because we always have such fun doing it so speak speaking of friends what was awesome this year for like the first time in three years we got to see our international friends also yeah yeah and that was that was i'll be honest it was really kind of special you know Uh, we got to see jesper peter yeah from poland yep which was i had great conversations with him because he's right on the border of the Ukrainian conflict, you know, Tashi, AJ, all these people that I haven't seen in, wow, three years. It's crazy. It goes by yeah. fast, but yeah, it's a long time. It, they let it was, Grace in. Right. Yeah, Grace was there. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. Oh, but the scissors, that was a little bit of heartbreak. Yeah. Those Damascus scissors, but I, I, I know where some of those went and they went to some good homes. Yeah. Right. I think Sally Rogers got a pair, right? Mm-hmm. One of them. Yeah, that's real cool. Very fun. Oh, yeah. Well, and and that's the thing over time, right? It's like there certainly was a number of years where I was super hyped up. I had specific pieces in mind when I would go to a show and I'd be bummed if I didn't, you know, I wasn't able to buy the cool stuff that I really wanted. And anymore, it's like, oh, really? One of my friends got that? That's awesome, right? You still can feel really good about it. And that's cool. Yeah. Did you... Did you see any like up and coming makers, Michael? I'll, I've got one that I want to mention. Um, yeah, I, I I actually bought bought a piece from him. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you you bought a very cool piece. I saw that slip joint as I was walking around. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, Jeffrey Mitchell. Um, I was just oh, yeah. happened to walk. I didn't actually meet him, but just walking around, I was like, ooh, that's a good looking slip joint. Picking yeah. up and nice walk and talk and you know. But I don't you know I don't know everybody anymore. Like I feel like I used to have a big man. I was like, he could have been, you know, some guy everybody knows and I don't, but yeah, it was, it was cool to see. Yeah. Um, great little piece. What'd you get Tom? Who who do you want to mention? I should say, maybe it's both. So it's, it's uh, Joe Magnifico. So he worked for Luke for a couple of years. I've met him before. Um, his knives are cool. He's got collaborations in with Boker. Um, but I picked up one of his little, uh, pocket fixed blades and it's, it's a brownie. Uh, which means it's a, the handle's modeled after a brown trout. Oh, yeah. And he puts, like, the different pin, colored pins in and everything. And he did 
Uh, he had a rainbow and, and I think, uh, what, uh, Brookie and some other ones, but beautiful work. Um, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less with him working with Luke. Um, but his attention to detail is, uh, pretty amazing. And I would highly recommend his work. I actually, uh, ordered another one from him today. Uh, wow. but yeah, I'm going to grab, a, I'm going to grab a few before he's, before I can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> before this episode airs. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, he, he's a, he's an up and coming maker and his work is epically clean. Like I wish my work was that clean. Oh, it's, it's that nice. Good. It's a nice endorsement. Cool is his name really Magnifico? It's not a stage name. It's pretty magnificent, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's making yeah. me think. <laughs> Michael should change his last name to Fabuloso. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Michael Fabuloso. You could adopt an Italian accent or something, or like you're from Spain. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a cool accent. Yeah, it was really good seeing him. I hadn't seen him in a in a year or two, and yeah, really cool. Fantastic. Well, so you're back home. What's it like, right? Usually it's like a bomb went off when you get back home. Uh. <laughs> so for me anyways, uh, I've always got a ton of knives that didn't make it. So I'm working on those a little bit. I also had sent probably 15 to 20 knives off to Butch to get leather work. And I they're not finished when I send them out, right? Because otherwise they get scratched and everything. So... I came home to a pile of, of those that I needed to finish and get out. And I've been working on those this week and trying to get some of the stuff that I didn't get to the show finished and also trying to get a little rest and spend some time with the family. Uh, went and saw Top Gun last night. That was pretty awesome. Nice. Nice. And yeah, that's about it. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how the switch goes where I'm switching over to folders primarily. And, um, I've got to get the knives that I've already sold out, obviously. And then, um, yeah, we're making switches. Nice. Nice. I saw this, uh, pistol handled push dagger thing that it'll be closed by the time the episode airs, but that thing is sweet looking, man. Yeah. I, Mm -hmm. I actually had a couple pieces that I took out to show Daniel when he came over and I left them on the desk. They were, they were four blade. So I (laughs) putting some of those up. I've got, couple other maybe four or five more stag or mammoth pieces that'll be going up over the next few days and nice, yeah nice. very cool yeah that stag on that pistol handle one it's phenomenal yeah. oh it feels good in the hand thanks guys awesome yeah it's beautiful man some lucky soul gonna buy that one and take her home i've mm-hmm. already shipped it oh really it's already sold yeah, I put it up for a lottery today and then... Oh, the I didn't guy, know the lottery was closed. I'm like, shit, I got to get down there and get, enter it before... Sorry, yeah, it's closed. It? All right. She gone, I shipped it. <laughs> well, it was kind of sad to see going. You see it go. It was a really nice one. No, I know that desk knife that Michael made for me with Stag. He was man, I hate to ship this out. <gasps> like, I don't it's really want to let go of it. You know how long I hold on to that shit? Yeah, I know. That's why when the <laughs> opportunity to buy that mammoth one bought, came up, I bought the mammoth one too because it's like, shit, I know that's another one he's aching for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that stuff leaving my house. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah. Ben actually bought uh, two like 12-inch tusks he's going to have mounted. Oh, wow. Like for a display. Yeah, I couldn't do that either. That's another thing. Same as the mammoth. Like people are like, oh, I'll buy a tusk and I'll cut it up. I'm like, I wouldn't know. Right. <laughs> well, he said he's never cutting them up. He said this is, I, I bought them just for a display piece. Good wow. for him. Wow. That is They're awesome. Cool. They're cool. They're matching tusks off the same same skull. Oh. Wow. That's got to be like the inch, like around his fireplace or something. Right. Something yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, old Ben over there going to have a pretty good mm-hmm. show apparently. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, he bought. We, he bought. So I found a piece of mammoth at the show, and I was like, "Cause Ben Ben has me make knives with his material, and and uh, like I'm making him a tusk right now with mammoth, and I'm like, you got to buy this, cause if I buy it, I will never put it on anything. But if you buy it, I'll build you a knife with it. Right, right, right. It's cream with like 
the bluest blue I've ever seen. And the cream like accents, it makes it even more. It's, it's crazy piece. Yeah. Yeah. That blue, blue green stuff is stunning. But the, most of it's dark and on like brown, right? Yeah. It yeah, seems yeah. like this is like blue, blue on creamy white. Yeah. It's nuts. That's my, that's my favorite. Uh, yeah. blue. And I think like, I think Don Hansen has 90% of the blue goodness out there. <laughs> yeah. Don must have quite a stash because there's a bunch of his knives floating around that have some just fantastic stuff on there. You know why I know he gets has a fantastic stash? Because I used to get some of my mammoth from Jody, who Jody would buy Don's like stuff he didn't think was cool enough. Ah. Then I'd buy the stuff that Jody didn't think was cool enough, which was really <laughs> cool stuff. Double hand me down. Yeah. Yeah. Luke Swenson, I have a folder from him, a slip joint that has some almost like turquoise blue mammoth. Man, is it just fantastic. Like you said, Tom, it's got little brown streaks in it, but boy, that blue is just, it, you know, it's like Bora Bora water or something. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the little turquoise. Yeah. Speaking of Luke Swenson, Luke, uh, Luke won another slip joint award, right? Best oh, traditional in that. Yeah. Go fix Save it. some for the rest of us, Luke. <laughs> Just going to say it. So congrats to Luke for that. That's real cool. And his mentor, Mr. Bill Rupel, Cutlery Hall of Fame, right? Got inducted. Yep. That's yeah. fabulous and well-deserved. Did you guys see Luke's speech at the ceremony? No. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. You'll have to check it out. He, he posted it and he said, you know, I'm not much of a speaker, but, you know, here was me introducing Bill and... He did a fabulous job. Very kind words. Um, you know, a little funny stuff thrown in there too, but fantastic intros. So high five to Luke for his award and a fine job introducing his mentor. And uh, congratulations to Bill for well-deserved recognition. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, sounds like it was a good one. I, it was. Uh, I miss... I miss uh, I regret not being there to walk Saturday with you guys, but um, we will definitely do it at a future show. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was different, but it was it was good. Um, I don't know if maybe just because I hadn't been in a few years, I just I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was tiring. It was you know a lot of work and stuff, but met some new people. You know, talked to some old guys that I knew, guys and gals that I knew, and just I don't know. Sat like. But walking around Saturday, it was packed. That's what was wild. It was like at your local gun show type of packed where you're kind of like squeezing between shoulder bodies. Shoulder to shoulder, yeah. Uh-huh. It was wild. So I hope everyone that uh, exhibited had a great show, you know. Agreed. Sold lots of knives, made lots of money, bought lots of materials. No, it's a good thing. And I, I heard good stuff about, in general, about the way the show was run. Like you said, there's always some drama around the way the line works and them kind of constantly trying to tune it. But it seems like uh high five well deserved to Alicia and her crew for making it all yeah. happen. I don't know how she yeah. does it. Nope. But she, she manages it and she does a great job. She probably is underpaid. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's too low. Well, thanks for the recap fellers. Makes me feel like I was there now except for not yeah. being able to see the knives. But but thanks, buddy, for grabbing that Big Bear for me. That's awesome. I look forward to checking it out. Ooh, it's, it's No good. problem. It's cool, man. It yeah. feels so good. Yeah. He does such fine work, that David Sharp. Very crafty guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. That Then that's a beautiful piece and different. Yeah. Different, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, uh, you know, we didn't do it up front, but we should have, and that is uh, – Thanks to all of our friends on Patreon who help support the show. We uh, have a way for people to pledge a couple bucks a month and help us out um, over on patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Just go there and search for Mark of the Maker. You can find us. And uh, that continues to grow. We're very thankful for that. We appreciate everyone's support. It helps us keep this thing rolling. And um, so, again, big thanks to our to our friends on Patreon and to George from AMX. Ink. I always call it AMX Titanium because I think he called it that for a long time, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I always want to call it American Medical Exchange. I know. <laughs> it's messed up. 
<laughs> it's because I worked in the healthcare profession there so you long. Go. Once you say it, you can't not say it. I know. Yeah. But thanks, George. We appreciate your help, buddy. It's good to see you, George. Yeah, man. And we appreciate all the Patreon. Uh, you guys help us so much. No doubt. Yes. No doubt. Next time I see George, I'm going to encourage him to do what I described and get his safari gear on and go into the who knows what desert, jungle, whatever, and go find some meteorite. Yeah, he, we need some new material. Yeah. Let's go discover some stuff for us. We keep saying, say an exotic, George. Yeah. Find something that costs us a whole lot of money to put on knives. <laughs> I think he's, he's already got some of that. <laughs> yes. All and flavors. We'll, and we'll keep buying it. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Later. Later all. To learn more about our makers, you can find Tom Krein on the web at KreinKnives.net, in his Facebook group, Krein Knives, or in his Instagram account, at Krein Knives. For Michael Birch, check BirchTreeBlades.com, Facebook group Birch Tree Blade Works, or Michael's Instagram at Birch Tree Blades. For myself and the Raygun Bead Project, we're on the web at RaygunDivision.com. We have a Facebook group called Raygun Division, or my personal Instagram, at M. Steiner. For those interested in photos, references from the show, or some discussion about the show itself, you can find us on the web at MarkOfTheMaker.com, in a Facebook group called Mark of the Maker, or on our Instagram, at Mark of the Maker. Last but not least, the ultra cool and haunting background music we use for the show is a piece called Noir Guitar by Stevie's Amp Shack, found at the Free Music Archive and licensed under Creative Commons CC BY 4.0. Thanks for listening. <laughs>